Hello everyone, welcome to Pearls of Eden. Thank you for joining me for our Freedom Friday. We made it. Um, guys, today is September the 28th, 2024, and I have some keys for you that I want to share with you. The Lord led me to Psalms 44 this morning and also to Song of Solomon last night, chapter 7. And I love Song of Solomon because it is a love letter. A lot of people see Songs of Solomon as very sensual, um, but it's actually a love letter to the bride. You know, to the pure, all things are pure. Um, but some people make Songs of Solomon a very sexual, um, hypersexual book. And really, it's, it's beyond that. It's not sexual at all for those who can see past that. Um, so let me, let me talk to you about Songs of Solomon chapter seven, and we'll dive into this word as the Lord give us, gives us understanding by his spirit to perceive what it is that he is saying. It says, how be beautiful are thy feet with shoes, O princess daughter. The joints of thy thighs are like jewels, the work of the hands of a cunning workman. The navel is like a round goblet, which wanteth not liquor. The belly is like a heap of wheat set about with lilies. The two breasts are like young rows that are twins. Thy neck is as a tower of ivory. Thine eyes like the fish pools in Heshbon by the gate of Bath Rabbim. Thy nose is the tower of Lebanon, which looketh toward Damascus. Thine head upon thee is like caramel, and the hair of thine head like purple. The king is held in the galleries. Now, as I said, if you only look in the surface of those verses, it can seem as though these are Verses that are talking about a man and a woman who are admiring each other, their outer beauty, but it's much deeper than that. This is a love letter between Song and Solomon, who represents Christ in this particular depiction, and the bride. <clears throat> and Christ, he loves his bride. He adores us. This is how he sees us. He sees the beauty within us. He created us. God created us before the foundations of the world and everything about us from the hairs on our head to how he has created our vessel was intentional. And I love the intentionality of this particular chapter because it just shows the love that he has, the true intimacy between the believer and Christ because it's not about religion, it's about relationship. And it shows the admiration is not just one way. A lot of times we think that we are adoring God. We are worshiping him. But in truth, he adores us. The Bible says the thoughts towards us that he has is as numerous as the sand. So this is a, a chapter where you see the Lord adoring his bride. And so I just want to encourage you that God loves us so much and his thoughts towards us are good and not evil. And I just love that because in this particular verse, it's just something to really think about. It says in verse five, thine head upon thee is like caramel and the hair of thine head like purple. Now purple represents royalty and I just thought about it. I have on purple. And this was not by coincidence. I was in my closet and I did not even intend to I haven't worn this shirt in so long that I felt led to put it on, not thinking of the scripture. Do you see how it just that is the intentionality of our God, right? That is how he orders our steps. You know the Bible, we always talk about the scriptures how he orders the steps of the righteous down to what we wear, down to our thought process, where we go. Um, he leads us. And I just think that's a beautiful example. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Um, because it just shows the intentionality even when we don't think so hard about it. We don't have to think or struggle about it. Like, okay, God, am I hearing you? It, but when we're walking with him, he's just so gracious to order our steps. And then we see exactly what it is that he is 
gently whispering to us and sharing with us as we go in the by and by. And I know you all can relate to what I'm saying. For those of you who understand this perfectly, you're like, yeah, I, I so get that, right? He's so intentional. But the purple, he says, and the hair of thine head, like purple. We understand that means royalty. I don't think he's saying she has purple hair, um, but that her hair represents royalty, the purple color, her head, the thoughts that she has. Um, she, her mind is set on God. And, and I guess I shouldn't even say her because the bride is male and female. The bride doesn't just symbolize women, but the bride are the believers of God. And so it says, the king is held in the galleries. And again, I think that just says that the body, you know, the body of Christ, our thoughts are always toward God. We're always thinking about ways that please him. We're thinking about his word. Uh, God's word is a part of our life. It's constantly on our mind. Have you ever heard uh, the saying, people say, you are so heavenly minded. You're no earthly good. Now, do you think that is a scripture? A lot of people think that's a scripture in the Bible, but actually that is like, I think Pilates or Socrates, Pilates or Pilates, I don't know, or Socrates, some philosopher uh, that came up with that. That wasn't God. He wants our thoughts to be toward him. It's not a bad thing. So when someone says, oh, you are so heavenly minded, take it as a compliment. They don't know. Maybe they think they're insulting you. Um, but it's actually a beautiful thing to have the king in the galleries of your mind because he has you on his heart and his mind, right? So let's let's go to Psalms 44. And this is a word of encouragement to the body of Christ as we continue to see things just suddenly shakings, great reversals. All of it is a part of this journey, this season that we're on, this wild ride. But I want to encourage you, no matter what you see, as Elias said, that, you know, we are continually to preserve and persist in prayer. And we are looking for that small size of a cloud, the size of a hand, because we know the rain is coming. So as God's people, we've already gotten the prophetic word. We're just looking for it. We're just looking for the sign and we're giving praise all and up and through the process because the rain is coming, you all. And it says in verse 1 of Psalms 44, 2, 2, this is a key. We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us what work thou didst in their, in their days in the times of old, how thou didst drive out the heathen with thy hand and plantest them, how thou didst afflict thy people and cast them out. For they got the land in possession by their own sword, and neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance, because thou hadst favor unto them. Thou art my king, O God, command deliverance for Jacob. Though thee, through thee will we push down our enemies. Though, I'm sorry, through thee we will push down our enemies. Through thy name will we tread them under, under that rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. But thou hast saved us from our enemies and hast put them to shame that hated us. And God, we boast all the day long and praise thy name forever. Salah. I want you to remember from who and where your strength comes. Some trust in chariots and horses, but we trust in the name of our Lord, our God, to save us. And he is going to do that. The victory that we are going to see in this season, it won't be won by might or power, but it'll be won by his spirit. So keep praising and keep worshiping because we will continue to see great reversals. There's much to get excited about. God is not a far off. You know, when you feel like God is so far away, sometimes that's when he's the closest. So be of good cheer. Walk in repentance. God is seeking for us to turn to him. He doesn't want to cast us off forever. 
He wants us to come and walk with him in a way that is pleasing in his sight. And that means we have to check the countenance, our countenance. We have to check our heart. We do that by asking the Holy Spirit to reveal anything that's within us that is not of God. And to create in us a clean heart and a right spirit. And Holy Spirit goes to work and he shows us some things and we think, oh my goodness, I didn't even see that, Lord. I didn't even know that was there. Thank you for showing me. And you repent and you confess your sins. And you keep walking according to his word. And he is faithful to lead us. So that's the word that I have of encouragement for you today. Um, I've got a couple current news that are ready to be uploaded. I've just got to do some editing. Um and then you all, it's time for me to come away. It's time for me to take my time away as I do every season around this time. Um, I love this to get along with God, to hear what God is saying for this season that's coming for the new year. I like to take the time to honor Rosh Hashanah, uh, which is the Feast of Tabernacles and, and the new year, God's year, right? So it's just a beautiful time to come away and pray and hear the voice of the Lord and sit at his feet without being interrupted by, you know, other things like YouTube. I love you all, but it, you, you have to, you have to get away to be with God. He has to refresh in you. You have to be always putting him ever, ever before you making sure that nothing becomes an idol, putting nothing first ahead of him. He's got to be first, you all. And that is my advice to you. Always keep God, fight to keep God first. Ask him if it means taking anything away that will separate you from him, then may it be so. Because nothing is more precious than your relationship with him. And so we want to make sure nothing ever, ever, ever becomes an idol. Because we know what happens to idols. Idols fall. So keep your eyes ever, ever on the prize. And he will always be with you. Ordering your steps. Keeping you. You can't keep yourself. It's the Lord who will keep you. You just have to trust by faith. And you have to be obedient and you have to submit and you have to surrender and he will be with you. So be of good cheer. Uh, like I said, you all look for those uh, current newses that will be coming up in your feed. I think there's about two and a couple shorts. Um, and then I will see you, God willing, um, after October 5th. October 6th, somewhere around there, God willing, I will be back with um, some teachings and whatever else the Lord has taught me through that time. And yeah, I love you all to life and I'll see you soon. It's Freedom Friday, you all. Let's get excited. We're going to have a few laughs and have fun. I've got some good stuff for you all. So uh, I'll see you soon. All right. All right.